Health and fitness trackers seem to be gaining a lot of attention recently, and rightly so. With the increased importance to personalize our health and fitness based on individual needs, trackers are the hottest gadget on the market now, as global market is estimated to go 3x from 36.3 billion in 2020 to 114.3 billion in 2028. I mean, who wouldn't want it? It's affordable, sleek, unique, and has a ton of features. It can track calories burned, steps taken, aerobic training zones, heart rate variability, and so on. When it comes to sleep optimization, it can teach you a lot about your body. Sleep quality, sleep patterns, sleep schedule, etc. So, can sleep trackers actually improve your sleep quality? A bit on the importance of sleep. Sleep is a natural regeneration process that helps us replenish, rejuvenate and regenerate our bodies. All of these little processes that happen during sleep prepare you for the next day. You're ready to jump off with a lot of energy and tackle the tasks for the next day. This natural biological process supports your immune function, it helps you maintain hormonal balance, it increases your energy, it does all those things. When sleep is deteriorated, we run into problems and fatigue. Poor sleep can cause myriad of different negative side effects and get you that closer to developing certain diseases like insulin resistance, diabetes, and in general, your mood suffers when you have a poor sleep. Aside from that, sleep is heavily beneficial for the brain in replenishing the stores of energy that help our brain function. It helps you think more clearly, it makes your brain a bit sharper, and it just smoothens all these things out. You've probably heard the phrase, you should sleep on it, and that is no coincidence. When we wake up from sleep, we're emotionally a lot more balanced, everything is regulated nicely, and we can actually make a lot better and more rational decision without distractions. As posted on Sleep Foundation, lab-based sleep tests track brainwave activity compared to sleep trackers which rely on heart rate and body movement. We wear them during sleep as they collect data. There are many different sleep trackers out on the market, from like smart watches and smart bands to the aura ring to different sleep mattresses and noise detection systems, a lot of different things exist. So these tools actually calculate physiological measures like heart rate, heart rate variability, oxygen saturation, they even detect movement during sleep. So they put all of these measures into an algorithm which can pretty much calculate accurately how well you slept. So the sleep onset latency, the duration of sleep, uh, how long you were in each phase of sleep, etc, etc. So for example, if you were moving less throughout the night and you had a lower heart rate, it would already go towards presenting a better score, higher sleep quality score. Mine is focused on tracking three things like sleep quality, so the overall score, sleep phases, how much you were in each, and the sleep consistency or schedule at what time you go to bed and at what time you wake up every single day. Now you may not notice it, but surprisingly, these tools can give you a great insight into your overall habits and how they can impact and affect your sleep and quality and duration. So I wore my sleep tracker for the past month, but I forgot to sync it like one of the weeks, so I have three weeks worth of data to show you something. Basically how these measures work, how the values are presented and what it actually means, how can you articulate it to understand your own sleep patterns. Overall, I was quite surprised by how accurate it was based on how I feel. Like if I were to wake up fatigued and kind of low energy and moody, it was almost certainly going to show a lower sleep score by around 10 to 15% in comparison to the days where I felt energetic, great and woke up with like ready to run, you know. So the first thing it gives you is an overall sleep score, measuring overall sleep quality. It does this by summing up more different variables like uh, duration, quality and restoration. So the scoring ladder is from 0 to 100 and 100 means excellent. We're going to show the grades later. So in general, you should aim for a higher number. It sort of helps you see trends and distinguish patterns on which days you sleep better, on which days you sleep poorer. 
And for example, you can see the difference how you sleep on weekends versus a regular work day versus when you have an exam or a tough day at work, etc. We'll hop into the app just to show you some of the data. If we compare the data from like this two days, 77 versus 87, we have a fair sleep score here and you can see the time spent awake is hour and 52 minutes and a lot of time spent in light sleep but almost none in REM sleep and lower in deep sleep. Now if we compare that with like the 87 day which is quite good sleep, you can see the smiley face there. You can already see that light sleep is 3 hours 50 and REM sleep is double and even more than that and awake time is hot. So that corresponds to a better sleep score. Second thing is sleep schedule and sleep consistency. So it measures this by telling you exactly at what time you go to bed each day and at what time you wake up. This doesn't have to do with when you fall asleep, but with when you go to bed, determined by probably movement, heart rate, and this kind of stuff. So I was quite surprised to find out that I was moving in the same range of around 20 minutes in a day. I was going to sleep at around 11.10 to 11.30 and something like that, but there were two days that were way far off going to sleep uh, at like 9 40 and 12 45 or something which just made me realize what i did on those days and how it affected my sleep later it just made me aware of when i actually go to sleep versus when i think i go to sleep okay here we are so it's like 11 27 11 22 i went to bed then it's like that time I went at 9.40 and then it's all around 11, 11.30, 50, 38, 50 and there was one day that was way off like this uh, where I went to bed at around 12.47. Okay, so this sort of makes you see and distinguish patterns and makes you realize when do you actually go to bed and it can be a great reminder. There is even a smart feature on the one that I have which can wake you up by vibration and it even has a smart wake option which helps awake you in the face in which you'll be the least groggy person you can. So in a span of half an hour, wake you up exactly when your body is actually ready to wake up without you falling into another sleep cycle that you're not gonna be able to fulfill. Sleep is separated into two main categories, non-REM sleep and REM sleep. Each one offers specific effects and benefits for the body. One sleep cycle lasts from 90 to 120 minutes. Optimally, we get around four to five cycles a night. Non-REM one phase is when you transition from wakefulness to sleep. The brain is in the alpha brainwave band known as wakeful relaxation. Non-REM 2 is light sleep as well, characterized by even shorter and mixed brain activity. It lasts for 10 to 25 minutes, 50% of the total sleep. Non-REM sleep 3 phase is the deepest, most regenerative sleep. It's a slow wave sleep lasting from 20 to 40 minutes. REM sleep is the fourth phase characterized by vivid dreaming and mixed brain activity, shifting from alpha to theta waves. Non-REM phases 1 and 2 are known as light sleep, non-REM 3 is the deepest restorative sleep and REM is the vivid dreaming one. Third and my favorite, it measures sleep phases. So it measures the patterns between how you shift between the REM and non-REM and light and deep sleep kind of phases. Now, the one I have uh, sort of separates this into four and it's awake time, then it's light sleep and it's REM sleep and then it's deep sleep, the most restorative and rejuvenating. The point of this is to notice the difference between how good quality of sleep you got. For example, if there was a night where you were stressed out and maybe had some alcohol in something versus on a day that you took a walk outside and did some deep breathing exercises and stuff like that. So we'll compare two days, the 77 versus 87. So this is the fair sleep day. And if we go there to see the metrics, you can see that I've spent like 18% hour and 52 minutes in awake state. Then I had only 9% REM sleep, 58% light and 15% deep sleep. Now this is the fair sleep score, right? If we go on to a little bit better, the good one, you can see that I spent only 10%, so 50 minutes awake, which is half of the previous night, a lot more time in REM sleep, 24%, light sleep at 45% and deep sleep hour and 45 minutes, so 21%, which is almost like 30% more. So you can see that spending more time awake or light sleep than in deep sleep affects the overall score. So the way sleep tracking improved my sleep and my health was actually quite interesting. I didn't notice that I was going to be more motivated to stay consistent to my schedule when I actually see that I'm going a little bit on and off, you know? That sort of led me to create a 
packed a deal with my roommate that we'd go to sleep at 11.15 or 10 minutes around that time and not really fluctuate in those two hours up and down and that we get out of bed at around 7.30. Pushing the alarm 7.30 on this guy sort of woke me up with a great vibration and it woke me right when I was ready to wake up without spending another half cycle in sleep and waking up groggy. So that's one thing. Another thing I've noticed is when I was leading my yoga classes, which are usually on Wednesday and Thursday for me, and I did a lot of deep diaphragmatic breathing and I came off of like long walk listening to a podcast and not really staring into screens and stuff. I slept a lot better and my sleep onset latency was a lot greater. I also noticed taking hot showers versus cold shower really did change how fast I could relax and fall asleep and taking up GABA did improve my sleep as well. The point of wearing a sleep tracker is to see how your habits can impact your sleep. When you have something quantifiable that comes out of a device with like all the numbers and graphs on, you can easily see which habits positively impact your sleep and which habits negatively impact your sleep. And you can also see what happens on the weekends, what happens when you're stressed and have an exam, what can deep breathing or a certain supplement like minerals and magnesium do for your sleep and can it actually help you improve it. It's a great way to learn and test it. You shouldn't be neurotic about that because falling asleep is not in our control. So the way I see this is it's a good thing to check out once a week and not every single day and stress over it and be like when you look back, uh huh, Wednesday I had poor sleep. What happened in Wednesday? Oh, I had exam and Thursday and I went partying previous day. So that is probably why it happened. Okay, I'm aware of that and I'm gonna think of ways to improve it. That's all I have for you today, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope sleep trackers can improve your sleep as well. Bye, and I'll check you in the next one.